Chapter 1 My Story Begins In 1825, I was ten years old. My father and mother were dead. I lived with my aunt and uncle, Mr. and Mrs. Reed. Their house was called Gateshead Hall. The house was in Yorkshire, in the north of England. My aunt and Uncle Reed had two children, a boy, John, and a girl, Eliza. I liked my Uncle Reed, and he liked me. But in 1825, my uncle died. After that, I was very unhappy. My Aunt Reed did not like me, and John and Eliza were unkind to me. It was a cold, rainy day in December. All of us were in the house. I wanted to be alone. I wanted to read. I opened a book. Then I heard my cousin John's voice. Jane? Jane Eyre? Where are you? John shouted. He came into the room and he saw me. Why are you reading my book? he asked. Give it to me. John took the book. He hit my head with it. I screamed. John hit me again. I pulled his hair and I kicked him. Help! Help! Mama! John shouted. Jane Eyre is hurting me! Aunt Reed ran into the room. She pulled me away from John. John hit me with a book, I said. I hate him, and I hate you too. You are a bad girl, Jane, my aunt said. Why do you hate me? You don't like me, I replied. John and Eliza are unkind to me. I want to leave Gateshead Hall. You want to leave? Aunt Reed said. Where will you go? Your parents are dead. You cannot live alone. Aunt Reed thought for a moment. My friend, Mr. Brocklehurst, is the owner of a school, she said. I will send you to Mr. Brocklehurst's school. A few days later, Mr. Brocklehurst came to Gateshead Hall. He was a very tall man. His eyes were dark, and his face was cruel. Jane Eyre, he said to me, God does not like bad children. God punishes bad children, Jane Eyre. God will punish John Reed, I replied. John Reed hits me, and he shouts at me. That is not true. You are a liar, Jane Eyre, Mr. Brocklehurst said. You must not tell lies, and you must not live here with your cousins. You will come to Lowood School. You will become a good girl. I want to come to your school, sir, I said. I want to leave this house. Bad girls are punished at my school, Jane Eyre, Mr. Brocklehurst said. The girls work very hard at Lowood. I will work hard. I will be a good pupil, Mr. Brocklehurst, I said. Two weeks later, I left Gateshead Hall. I went to Lowood School. Chapter Two Lowood School. It was the month of January. I arrived at Lowood School at night. A servant took me up some stairs and into a big bedroom. There were many beds in the room. The girls in the beds were asleep. The servant took me to an empty bed. I put on my night clothes and I got into bed. Soon, I was asleep too.
I woke up very early. A loud bell was ringing. The bedroom was dark and cold. I watched the other girls. They washed in cold water and they dressed quickly. There was a plain brown dress next to my bed. And there was a pair of ugly, heavy shoes. I washed quickly. Then I put on my new clothes. I was very hungry. I followed the other girls down the stairs. We sat down at long tables in a large dining room. Our food was terrible. The food is bad again, one of the girls said. Stand up, a teacher shouted. Don't talk. We stood up. We did not speak. We walked into a big schoolroom and we sat down. There were about eighty girls in the schoolroom, and there were four classes. The oldest girls were in the fourth class. I was in the first class. Four teachers came into the room, and we began our lessons. The lessons were not interesting. First, we read some pages in a book. Then, our teacher asked us questions about those pages. After four hours, we went outside. It was very cold. Very soon, a bell rang. Lessons started again. Three weeks passed. One afternoon, the head teacher came into the schoolroom. The head teacher's name was Miss Temple. Mr. Brocklehurst was with her. We all stood up. I stood behind an older girl. I did not want Mr. Brocklehurst to see me. Mr. Brocklehurst walked slowly round the room. Everybody was very quiet. And then I dropped my book. Mr. Brocklehurst stopped walking. He looked at me. Ah, the new girl, he said. Come here, Jane Eyre. Then he pointed at two of the older girls. You two girls, put Jane Eyre on that high chair, he said. Look at Jane Eyre, everybody, Mr. Brocklehurst said. This child is bad. She is a liar. She will be punished. Miss Temple, teachers, girls, do not talk to this child. Then. He spoke to me again. Jane Eyre, you must stand on that chair for two hours, he said. You are a bad girl. That evening, I cried and cried. But Miss Temple was kind to me. You are a good pupil, Jane, she said. And you are not a bad girl. I am your friend, Jane. Thank you, Miss Temple, I said. Lowood School was in an unhealthy place. The buildings were wet and cold. Mr. Brocklehurst owned the school. He was a rich man. But he did not buy warm clothes for us. And he did not buy good food for us. Everybody hated him. In the spring... Many of the girls became sick. Some of them left the school. They never came back. Many of the girls died. That spring was a terrible time. We had no lessons. Miss Temple and the other teachers took care of the sick pupils. Mr. Brocklehurst had to buy better food for us. And he had to buy warm clothes for us. Mr. Brocklehurst never came to the school. The next year, Lowood School moved to a better place. It was a healthier place. There were new schoolrooms, new bedrooms, and a new dining room.
The new buildings were bright and clean. The teachers were happy. After that, I was happy at Lowood School too. I was a pupil at Lowood School for six years. Then I became a teacher. I was a teacher at the school for two years. But I never returned to Gateshead Hall, and the Reeds never wrote to me. Chapter 3 Thornfield Hall In 1833, I was 18 years old. In the summer, Miss Temple left Lowood School. She got married. I wanted to leave Lowood too. I wanted a new life. I will be a governess, I thought. I put an advertisement in a newspaper. October 1833. Lowood. A young woman wants to teach one or two children in their home. She teaches English, arithmetic, geography, religion, French, drawing and music. J. E. I had a reply to my advertisement. The reply was from Mrs. Fairfax of Thornfield Hall near Millcott. Millcott was about 70 miles from Lowood School. Mrs. Fairfax wanted a governess for a little girl. I wrote to Mrs. Fairfax immediately. I was going to be a governess at Thornfield Hall. I travelled to Millcott in a coach. At Millcott, a servant met me. He took me to Thornfield Hall. At Thornfield Hall, another servant opened the door. She was smiling. She took me into a small, warm room. A lady was in the room. She was sitting by the fire. Are you Mrs. Fairfax? I asked her. Yes, my dear, she said. And you are Miss Eyre. Are you cold? Sit by the fire, Miss Eyre. A servant will bring you some food. Mrs. Fairfax is very kind, I said to myself. I will be happy here. Will I see Miss Fairfax tonight? I asked. Mrs. Fairfax looked at me. She smiled. Miss Fairfax? No, no, she said. Your pupil's name is not Miss Fairfax. Your pupil is Adèle Varon. Adèle's mother was a French woman. Adèle is Mr. Rochester's ward. He takes care of her. Mr. Rochester? Who is Mr. Rochester? I asked. Mr. Edward Rochester is the owner of Thornfield Hall. Mrs. Fairfax said, I am his housekeeper. I take care of Thornfield Hall. Mr. Rochester is not here now. He does not like this house. He is often away from home. I was very tired. Mrs. Fairfax took me up the wide stairs. She took me to my room. I went to bed immediately and I slept well. The next morning, I woke early. The sun was shining. I put on a plain black dress. I opened my bedroom door. I walked along a corridor and down the wide stairs. I walked out into the sunny garden. I turned, and I looked up at my new home. Thornfield Hall was a beautiful house with many large windows. The garden was beautiful too. After a few minutes, Mrs. Fairfax came into the garden. She spoke to me. Good morning, Miss Eyre, she said.
You have woken early. Miss Adele is here. After breakfast, you must take her to the schoolroom. She must begin her lessons. A pretty little girl walked towards me. She was about eight years old. She spoke to me in French, and I replied in French. After breakfast, I took Adele to the schoolroom. We worked all morning. Adele enjoyed her lessons, and I was happy. In the afternoon, Mrs. Fairfax took me into all the rooms of Thornfield Hall. We looked at the paintings and at the beautiful furniture. We walked along the corridors. Come up onto the roof, Miss Eyre, Mrs. Fairfax said. You will see the beautiful countryside around Thornfield Hall. We walked up many stairs. At last, we were at the top of the house. We walked along the top corridor. Mrs. Fairfax opened a small door, and we walked onto the roof. Look, Miss Eyre, Mrs. Fairfax said. You can see for many miles. We stood on the roof for a few minutes. Then we went back into the house. We walked carefully towards the stairs. The top corridor was narrow and dark. Suddenly, I heard a strange laugh. Who is that, Mrs. Fairfax? I asked. Mrs. Fairfax did not reply. She knocked on a door. Grace, she said. The door opened. Behind the door was a small room. A servant was standing at the door. Be quiet, Grace, please, Mrs. Fairfax said. The woman looked at Mrs. Fairfax. Then she closed the door. That was Grace Poole, Mrs. Fairfax said. She works up here. Sometimes she laughs and talks with the other servants. Don't worry about Grace. Please come downstairs now, Miss Eyre. Chapter 4 Mr. Rochester Three months passed. I had not met the owner of Thornfield Hall. Mr. Rochester had not come home. One January afternoon, I went out and I walked towards the road. I was going to the village of Hay. I was going to post a letter in the village. Hay was two miles from Thornfield Hall. The day was fine, but it was very cold. I walked quickly, and soon I was near the village. Suddenly, a big black and white dog ran past me. A moment later, a man on a black horse followed the dog. Then, I heard an angry shout. The dog ran past me again. It was barking loudly. I turned round. The horse had fallen on the icy ground, and the man had fallen from the horse. I walked towards them. Can I help you, sir? I asked. My horse fell. I've hurt my foot, the man said. The horse stood up. The man tried to stand up too, but he could not stand. He fell onto the ground again. The man was about thirty-five years old. He was not handsome, but he had a strong face. He had dark eyes and black hair. He was not very tall, but his body was powerful. I'll bring somebody from Thornfield Hall, I said. Do you live at Thornfield? The man asked. I am the governess, I replied. Ah, yes, the governess, the man said. Help me, please. The man stood up very slowly 
and he put his hand on my shoulder. He walked slowly towards his horse. I helped him. He pulled himself onto the horse. Thank you. Now go home quickly, the man said, and he rode away. I walked on to the village, and I posted my letter. Then I returned to Thornfield Hall. Bright lights were shining in the big house. I went inside. A big, black and white dog walked towards me. It came from the dining room. I had seen the dog before. Whose dog is that? I asked a servant. It's Mr. Rochester's dog, the servant replied. Mr. Rochester has come home, but he has hurt his foot. His horse fell on some ice. I smiled. The owner of Thornfield Hall had returned. But I did not see Mr. Rochester again that day. I saw Mr. Rochester the next day. He sent for me in the evening. I put on a clean dress. I brushed my hair carefully. Mr. Rochester was in the large sitting room. He was sitting in a big chair. His right foot was on a small chair. Mrs. Fairfax and Adele were sitting with him. This is Miss Eyre, sir, Mrs. Fairfax said. Mr. Rochester looked at me. He did not smile. Sit by the fire, Miss Eyre, he said. Where have you come from? From Lowood School, I replied. I was there for eight years. Eight years, Mr. Rochester said. That is a long time. Who are your parents? I have no parents, sir, I answered. They are dead. But where is your home, Miss Eyre? Mr. Rochester asked. I have no home, sir. I have no family, I said. Why did you come to Thornfield Hall? Mr. Rochester asked. I wanted to leave Lowood, sir, I replied. I put an advertisement in a newspaper. Mrs. Fairfax replied to my advertisement. Yes, I did, Mrs. Fairfax said. Miss Eyre is a good teacher, Mr. Rochester. Mr. Rochester smiled for the first time. You are very young, Miss Eyre, he said. I am eighteen, sir, I replied. Mr. Rochester smiled again. He did not ask me more questions. After that evening, I did not see Mr. Rochester for a few days. Then, one night, he sent for me again. Sit near me, Miss Eyre, he said. Mrs. Fairfax will talk to Adele. I sat down quietly, but I did not speak. The fire was very bright. I saw Mr. Rochester's face clearly. I saw his large, dark eyes. He was smiling. He was happy. After a minute, Mr. Rochester spoke. Miss Eyre, he said, you are looking at me very carefully. Am I a handsome man? No, sir, I said. You speak the truth, Miss Eyre, Mr. Rochester said. Look at me again. Am I a kind man? No, sir, I said again. You are smiling now, but you are not always kind. That is true, Mr. Rochester replied. I have had a difficult life. I have met bad people. I have been a bad person myself. Now Thornfield Hall is my home.
but I hate this house. You are very young, Miss Eyre. You cannot understand me. You are right. I don't understand you, sir, I said. I stood up. Where are you going? Mr. Rochester asked. It is late. Adele must go to bed, I said. Are you frightened of me, Miss Eyre? Mr. Rochester asked. No, sir, I replied. But you say strange things, sir. Mr. Rochester smiled. Take Adele to her bedroom now, Miss Eyre, he said. We will talk again tomorrow. After that night, we talked together many times. Mr. Rochester was an interesting man, but he was a strange man too. I often thought about him. Why does Mr. Rochester hate Thornfield? I asked myself. Thornfield Hall is a beautiful place, but Mr. Rochester is not happy. Chapter 5 Fire. It was March. One night I was in bed, but I was not asleep. The house was quiet. Suddenly, I heard a sound in the corridor outside my room. Who's there? I said. Nobody answered. Then, I heard a strange laugh. I got out of my bed and I went quietly to the door. I listened. I heard another sound. Somebody was walking up the stairs to the top corridor. Then I heard somebody close a door. Was that Grace Poole? I said to myself. Yes, it was Grace. Why was she laughing? And why is she walking in the house at night? Is she mad? I must tell Mrs. Fairfax about this. I will speak to her now. I put on some clothes and I opened the door. There was a candle on the floor outside my room. The candle was burning. There was thick smoke in the corridor. I went into the corridor. I looked around me. The door of Mr. Rochester's bedroom was open, and the smoke was coming from Mr. Rochester's room. I ran into the room. Wake up, sir! What happened, Jane? There was a fire, sir. Grace Poole tried to kill you. Stay here, Jane. Open the window. I'll go upstairs. I sat in a chair by the window. Time passed. At last, Mr. Rochester returned. Please don't worry, Jane, he said. Grace Poole is a strange woman, but she won't hurt anybody tonight. I stood up. Good night, sir. I said. Mr. Rochester held my hand. He looked at me, and he smiled. Thank you, my dear friend, he said. You saved my life tonight, Jane. Good night, sir, I said again. I went back to my bed. I was very tired. But at first, I could not sleep. Suddenly, I understood something. I loved Mr. Rochester. He had smiled at me. He had held my hand. Did he love me? I did not know. But I thought about Mr. Rochester for a long time. I did not see Mr. Rochester the next day. He did not send for me. In the evening, 
I went down to Mrs. Fairfax's sitting room. The housekeeper was looking out of the window. The weather has been good today, Mrs. Fairfax said. Mr. Rochester had a good day for his journey. His journey? Where has he gone? I asked. I was surprised. He has gone to Ingram Park, Mrs. Fairfax replied. Mr. Rochester will stay there for a week or more. He has many friends. All his friends will be at Ingram Park this week. Will there be any ladies at Ingram Park? I asked. Yes, Mrs. Fairfax said. There will be many ladies there. Miss Blanche Ingram will be there. Mr. Rochester has known her for many years. Is Miss Ingram beautiful? I asked. She is very beautiful, Mrs. Fairfax said. Will Mr. Rochester marry her? I asked. Mrs. Fairfax smiled. I don't know, Miss Eyre, she replied. I don't know. I was very unhappy. I went up to my bedroom. I looked in my mirror. Jane Eyre, I said to myself, you are not pretty, and you are poor. Mr. Rochester will never marry you. He will marry Miss Blanche Ingram. She is a rich lady. You are a poor governess. Forget Mr. Rochester Jane Eyre. Forget him.